Hi guys and welcome to today's episode. My name is Marlene and I'm going to talk you through my London travels and itinerary. So starting from the beginning, I went to Brighton for a conference this last week to attend uh, a conference at the University of Sussex and um, I did have a very good time in Brighton. I did upload a short vlog about my time, especially about my like um, after work highlights. Um, but I did also, after being in Brighton, go up to London uh, because my flight was going out of there again on Sunday. And I spent Saturday and Sunday there just on my own, um, which is, I'm very happy and glad that we're able to do this just after a work trip, spend some time there on our own and in our free time. Um, I did get home on Sunday really late, so I was really tired um, the next day, but it was really worth it, I think. Um, just for my background, I've been to London a couple of times right after my uh, A-levels, so right after I graduated high school, I um, worked as an au pair in London. I was in the East um, southern, southern area of London, uh, around Dulwich, uh, Peckham, and um, yeah, I, so, I mean, I always drove up to kind of like central and explored some other areas when I was living there, but I mean, some areas more than others. And so in the, in the leading up to this trip, I did plan kind of like my perfect day itinerary. And if you're anything like me and you've subscribed to this channel or you come across the kind of like keywords of this title, you will like books, <laughs> you will like coffee and you will like yarn. And I try to combine kind of like my perfect one day itinerary, like I said, just because I only had this like one day Saturday, one full day for myself in London without my luggage. I did have to check out Sunday morning again and then planned a day around visiting a friend who I met through the Instagram knitting community um, and wanted to see her yarn shop. So this video is not going to include a yarn shop haul. I'm going to put that into my um, latest knitting podcast episode. Um, but I'm going to show you the books that I got. So I'm just going to roll the clips in a second uh, of all the things that I got up to. Obviously, they don't include everything. I did get a small breakfast at the hotel, which was nice. I do like the like toast and beans and hash browns. And um, they had some like vegetarian sausages and uh, mushrooms. And yeah, I like the like English breakfast style. I got majorly back into... <laughs> black tea with uh, milk, which is something that I adapted when I uh, lived there nearly 10 years ago now. I will say that again in my voice over a couple of times, so bear with me. It's just a very dear memory to me and it was one of my favorite things that I've done in life so far. So I'm that annoying person that talks about their time abroad all the time. I'm sorry. It's just, I mean, I'm self-aware. <laughs> at least. Um, but yeah, I'm also going to include in the description box down below. So if you don't know where that is, it's right under the title. And then it says something like show more and that you, you can have like a drop down kind of like box where all the information is going to be linked. I'm going to link all the places that I went to. Um, I tried not to like overdo it with the editing, but I did include other places and I created a map again. That is something that I did when I went to New York for my uh, last kind of like big work trip last last year when I attended a conference at the University of Columbia University. And I did have a couple of days after that for like my, my own things that I wanted to do. I took some time off work and spent it there. Um, and I did include some of the links to my favorite yarn shops, bookshops, coffee uh, places uh, on a list there. Obviously, I didn't make it myself to all of these shops because technically I only had like one full day. <laughs> um, like I said, my second day was planned with a friend. Uh, you're going to see her yarn shop in Chiswick as well. 
And yeah, if you are planning a trip to London, I think this is going to be a great way to maybe see what I really highly recommend. If, if you're anything like me, you will love these places as well. And I did also plan it around the opening hours of the shops. So when I first started my day, I drove with a train and tube to this one area. I think in the end, I realized it's called like Fitzrovia and Marlbo Marlbone. Marlebone, <laughs> that's it. And um, I started my day at the, the shop that opened the earliest. I think they opened at nine. Um, I wasn't able to find many places that opened before nine <laughs> on a Saturday in London. Uh, and so I started my day at the bookshop, then went on to a cafe and then went on to um, a department store and then went on to a yarn shop and so on. Um, I went to a museum and then at the end I got a classic kind of like pub dinner. Um, I was pretty tired at the end of the day. I think I did like 25,000 steps that day. <laughs> so I didn't take as much time as I would have loved to. Um, at some of those places, especially at Tate Modern, I didn't. Uh, another gallery that I highly recommend is the Saatchi Gallery. I really love that place and yeah like I said I could have spent so much more time there I hope you like this kind of format and I'll see you back at the end of these like clips to talk to you about the books that I got so of course I first had to drive from Brighton to London to Blackheath where my hotel was that is close to Lewisham and um, because I was quite hungry when I arrived at the hotel, I went to Franco Manca, which is one of the places that I always visited when I was living in London almost 10 years ago now. I got this delicious margarita, a Aperol spritz and some olives. And the next day was already my big itinerary day. I drove into London reading a bit on the train and first went into kind of like the um, Baker Street area. This area was somewhere between Soho and Camden and I was quite shocked to see that this statue of the great detective Sherlock Holmes didn't look anything like Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> My first stop here was of course Marlebone and the Daunt Books store, which was somewhere where I wanted to go for a long time. I've already got one of their tote bags from a friend who previously visited London and went there. And I already knew what I wanted to get. Obviously, the new Emily Henry book had to come with me, but I also was just really happy to stroll around the bookshop, which was just beautiful. Look at these like staircases and just endless amount of books, which I love. And so I took my goods and went on my sweet little way. 50 minutes from there, there was Fabrique Bakery, which I had um, come across in New York City. And I love cardamom bun, so I got a cardamom bun and an oat milk latte and just some water and just sat there for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes and dipped some of my knitting. This is my Barbara shawl by Gregoria Fibers and I'm knitting it in Prunilla in the colorway chai. I was just sitting there drinking my coffee. This is was kind of like my second little breakfast. I already had a small breakfast in the hotel. I didn't know I had booked that, but obviously I did. And then I went on to my next stop on my list, which was Liberty London, which is a very traditional department store. It is very well known, I do think. And it is close to Oxford Circus, so I was pretty much walking around Fitzrovia and Marlebone for that first part of the day. And here in Liberty, I was just looking at so many beautiful things that I couldn't afford. But one thing that I treated myself to was a brow threading session at Blink Brow Bar in Liberty. And I really liked the results. I was so happy to get my brows threaded once again, since I haven't had them done like that in a long time. When I was living in London, I usually got them done that way. And I just, it's just my favorite thing. And here in Liberty, I was walking through the textiles and fabrics area. And they actually also had an area where they had wool and other crafting things, which I was really 
interested to see. I had never seen that and I didn't know that they offered that. One other thing that I really loved in this area of the shop is that they had this huge amount of buttons and the displays as well as patterns to sew and yeah just the general aesthetic of the store is just wonderful. In here I only got my staple perfume which is eccentric molecules but I also just mooched around the shop and looked at the beautiful displays and the beautiful flowers in front of the shop. And from there I just walked through Soho for a bit. I just admired the huge LGBTQIA plus and pride flags that were on there before grabbing an iced latte at Arabica and then just moving on to stroll through the streets and just look at everything that came my way and then took the tube uh, to Islington to the Camden Passage to go to the first yarn shop of the day. This was actually such a lovely area and there were so many nice like little shops and this like antique market as well as cute little cafes but the main reason why i came to this area was loop london which is one of the yarn shops in london and it's such a cute and eclectic looking yarn store that has so many different um, brands of yarns and colors as you can see here i was actually quite overwhelmed by the amount of yarn that they had the staff was lovely they talked to me and they were all knitting i just got a few couple of small bits and gift for a friend and then went off to tate modern which is one of my favorite museums in london and, and admission for the general exhibition is free although you can also pay more to get into the special exhibitions that they put up this um, kind of like performance i had already seen before so i'm always so happy to see um, artists that i already know being displayed in huge museums like this this is Martha Rossler with her well-known piece, Semiotics of the Kitchen. And here are just a couple of the other art pieces that I enjoyed looking at the most. Some of them very political. I was just there for about an hour. I couldn't um, very much walk at this point anymore. I was so tired. My feet were so tired. So I did go back to Blackheath to the local pub and got some mac and cheese with some arancini balls and some green beans which were so amazing uh, before starting my second day in London. I actually went to Chiswick to see my friend Valentina. She has a yarn shop there called My Every Room and we did meet over the Instagram knitting community. Um, I did have to take my luggage and already check out of the hotel. This was my last day in London, this was a Sunday, but that was no problem because Valentina was so amazing and let me just leave my baggage at her place. And I was able to look around her beautiful shop and squish all the amazing yarns that she has in stock. We also went to the local water zones and I did get the second book, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then we went to Gail's Bakery where I got a almond croissant which is very much nostalgic for me because this also used to be my favorite order when I lived in London almost 10 years ago. After going to Waterstones and taking our time we went to lunch at Napoli on the road and shared a vegan parmigiana pizza before going back to the shop where I got a couple of skeins of yarn which I'll show you in my upcoming podcast episode and then it was already time to leave for the airport to go back home. Hi again, <laughs> so I hope you like these kind of like clips of my time in London. Um, now I want to talk to you about the books that I got. The first book that I did get was from Dawn Books and this is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I already read, um, in English it's called You and Me on Vacation, in the German version it's called People We Meet on Vacation or I don't really know why that is or if that's like the American English word version that I had access to. I don't know why I listened to that on Audible actually and book lovers I got the book for in paperback 
version. I actually prefer paperback over like the hardcover books any day, um, but this was quite new still, so they didn't have the paperback version yet. And it was still only, I think, 15 euros. Um, oftentimes the hardcover versions cost like 20 or like 20 plus euros. Um, but yeah, I'm, I don't know much about book publishing, so I don't know anything about that. Um, but this I planned on getting at Dawn Books. Um, I was just really anticipating this um, book to come out. Like I said, I have read two of her books previously and I really loved book lovers. People we meet or people that meet on vacation or you and me on vacation. I do think the like title, um, you, people we meet on vacation doesn't really match the book in a, in a way. I mean, you and me on vacation fits better. Um, and I don't know why they did that. And also the book didn't speak to me as much as book lovers did. I don't know why, but I think like the last couple of, maybe this is going to spoilers. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers, <laughs> maybe like skip ahead a minute or so. But I thought like the last hundreds or so pages were a bit repetitive and it was like, will they or won't, won't they like get each other in the end? And it was like, oh, come on. I Now I know you don't think you deserve her. You don't think you deserve him, but like get it together. It was just a bit like, come on. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to read that. I think it's going to be a perfect summer read. And on that note, I got Beach Read as well. It's also by Emily Henry. Uh, it's also this like beautiful cover. Both of them are by the Penguin Publishing House. Um, and this might be my travel book because I'm going to only in like a month. Yeah, it's like, it's only like four weeks and I'm going to fly to Seattle to see Chelsea. And I think because this is the paper book version, this is going to be a perfect book to take with me on the flight probably won't have much reading time when I'm there but like just on the flight there and back again I think this is going to be really nice and I did get this at um, Waterstones uh, with Valentina when I was um, yeah just looking through the shop with her you you'll see that uh, you will have seen that in one of the clips um, yeah, I'm just really excited for the two books that I haven't read from her. This was like very much praised by the people working in the shop. The women were like, oh yeah, we love that book. And so I'm just really very much looking forward to those. I haven't, I'm, I'm usually not like trying to read too much about a book or a movie or a film before watching or reading it. I try to sometimes just be like very much like not knowing what kind of like what I get myself into and then I'm surprised on everything that's happening. I don't know why but yeah I, I know she talks about that in her book book lovers how this one character she's always reading the the ending of a book before she's starting the book and I'm not like that. I'm just not. I don't know. I'd like to, maybe I'm a rule follower, but yeah, I'll read books like that. Um, but the last two books that I got, I'm very happy that I had a big luggage so I was able to get those books. I actually didn't shop as much. I got a dress, those four books, a couple of skeins of yarn, although some of them were like gifting yarns. I actually didn't get any, uh, just like one top uh, like camisole quantity um, and then a couple of like single mini skeins and then I got a bit of yarn from Brighton actually I got more yarn in Brighton than in London um, and then just a couple of like skincare bits which I can maybe add in the end I don't know if you're interested in stuff like that I am but it's not like things that I talk about on here right so um, yeah so I didn't spend I did spend a bit of money, but I didn't go completely overboard, I think. 
at least. Yeah, because uh, like the food and the coffee and everything, just like staying in a hotel in London was already <laughs> um, expensive enough. But yeah, the last two books that I got were really good actually by Monica Heisey and Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwong. Um, I had heard about those two books um, just through, I mean, this was talked about quite a lot on like the bookstagram sphere and Yellow Face has just come out, I think. And um, it's about uh, a white author who is telling her, um, I think Chinese or um, Asian uh, friends who passes, um, who tells her story, like who steals her manuscript. Um, and actually this was a book a, a colleague of mine talked, whoops, sorry, talked about uh, at the conference that I attended and she said that she had bought that at the airport, I think, and read it. And it just sounded really, yeah, really interesting. I mean, stealing an unpublished manuscript. Yeah, dark humor, white lies and deadly consequences. I thought that sounded really, really interesting. And I'm interested to see how this turns out. And um, um, I heard that this really good actually is supposed to be about um, a young woman or like a millennial woman struggling in her PhD, which <laughs> really spoke to me. And so I knew I had to get it. I try not to read too much about like the struggles or the politics of doing a PhD, but actually if I, like through saying that, I, I did <laughs> read quite a bit of stories. Um, but I think it's important to like, yeah, read those stories, especially if you're struggling. I mean, they might be interesting if you're not struggling or if you're struggling, but you're still getting through it. But if you're struggling and feel like you might not go, like be able to make it, like this feeling inside of you, um, I feel like p books like that can be so helpful. So I'm really interested to see how this is going to turn out. Right now, I'm still reading... So right now I'm still reading Cleo Cleopatra and Frankenstein and another book called Thousand Serpentine um, Fear or Angst. It's a German book by a German, um, black German author from the, um, so it's a book by a black German author. Um, it's called um, Thousand Serpentine Angst. It's a German book. Uh, I know there is an English title, but I, at this point in time, I don't know it anymore. But yeah, I'm reading those two books. Both at this point are not really easy to get through, obviously maybe because of the content of the book, but also because, um, I mean, I'm, I'm like 50% through the 1017 Angst and I, it is difficult to read, but also I think it's so important. But with Frankenstein or Cleo, Cleopatra and Frankenstein, I just, I seem not to really get into it. There are a couple of aspects that speak to me in a way, but yeah, I will have to finish those two to really make like make my mind up about them. But I just wanted to say these books were are probably not going to be read in like a month. They will probably take me all throughout the summer. And I do still have like a couple of books stacked up for my to read list for this. Uh, upcoming um, season and the next couple of months so I will slowly make my way through them but I yeah I'm just really happy that I got those and maybe this is going to make a nice um, thumb thumbnail <laughs> but yeah I really hope you enjoyed my kind of like one day my perfect London I turn it whoops uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video my like one <clears throat> my like one day my perfect itinerary for one day in London um I hope you're excited for my next episode where I talk to you about my yarn acquisitions that I made in the UK and um yeah thank you so much for watching please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video if you did enjoy it and I'm 
yeah, already excited to see you next. Thank you. Bye.